Yes, I already know what you're gonna think from the title of this video, and yeah, I know, I hate worried videos, you hate worry, worried videos, we all hate worried videos. But yeah, even as a genuine diehard Splatoon fan, this still leaves me a little bit concerned, and I just want to express my thoughts. When Splatoon 3 was initially announced, I was out of my chair. I was screaming, I was flipping, I was dipping, I was hyped. I was, hmm, I had something close to a childhood-like excitement, but throughout the beginning half of the trailer, I just genuinely thought that it was another Splatoon 2 DLC. Because in my mind, I I was like, I know how Nintendo works. They wouldn't release a third game on the same console as the second game. That just makes no sense to put two of the same game on the same console. But they did it, and I was confused. I was happy, but it was something so out of left field and so not Nintendo that I just kind of, I, I, I just didn't expect it. I know that Splatoon fans have wanted the third game, and yes, I know that people have wanted the third game since like 2019, but I just knew in my mind that that didn't make any sense at all. But to me personally, genuinely in my mindscape, the last thing that I'd expect on the Switch is a Splatoon 3, let alone like the same exact Switch. If they're gonna try and do the Switch Pro thing and have exclusive games on that, and yeah, that sounds scummy, but at least the Splatoon 3. If it was a thing, it would be on that, not just the base Switch. Plus the factor of they don't have a lot of trailers telling us a lot of info on the game. Now sure, we do get the occasional Twitter stuff, like saying that all the weapons are going to be returning, but outside of that, most of the other stuff is like maybe a stage or two, maybe music, but then the rest of it is just how gear is in that game and how the world works now. And while yeah, that's cool, Having it exclusive to Twitter just seems a little off. But if you're a person like me that tries to zone themselves out from Twitter as much as they possibly can because social media bullshit is just present there every single hour of the day, it kind of is weird to lock it only to Twitter. And that's not even mentioning that we haven't realistically had a Splatoon 3 Direct, basically explaining everything that we need to know before the game launches, which to some extent makes sense why we haven't had it yet, because it's how the Splatoon pattern goes. We usually get a Direct like three, four weeks away from release, and well, yeah, that seems weird. It's... it's a little justified. So, if we were going to get a Splatoon 3 Direct, it would probably be either next week or the week after that, so just keep that in mind. But outside of that, we really don't have a lot of information on this game. Sure, we've seen how Turf War works, we've seen some new mechanics with the game, we've seen Salmon Run, we've seen the single player mode, but... Outside of that, we haven't seen a lot. We don't know if there's going to be any new ranked modes. We don't know if they're hiding other supers in the game. We don't know what the hell Splatsville is going to be formed like. We don't know what's, like, overall, what everything is new. Because to me personally, and a lot of other people, if the trailer pacing and just information pulling hasn't been so slow, this game would probably have come out when Xenoblade 3 came out. Because that's just how Splatoon is. We are expecting that the game comes out somewhere in, like, summer break formation of summer instead of past that, and technically still counting as summer, but not really at the same time. Because Splatoon 1 came out in June, and then the second game came out in July. But the thing is, it doesn't seem right that the third game's coming out in the beginning of September. Sure, it's the beginning, but it's still fucking September. 
And this fact leads me to believe that Xenoblade 3 and Splatoon 3 had switched release dates, because Xenoblade 3 was supposed to come out in September, and then it came out in July, and while Splatoon 3 didn't have a release date, it did say t summer of 2022, meaning that, yeah, you technically can stretch it to the beginning of September, but that's a little shitty, and when you usually think summer, you think June, July, beginning of August. So, I just don't really know what they're planning to really do with this game. And it doesn't help that they haven't had a trailer that, outside of Splatoon fans, have really grabbed anyone. Like, Splatoon 2 is sold out of this world. It's sold 13 million copies, and honestly, that's pretty damn good for especially a new IP. But the problem is, is that I just don't see a lot of people giving as much of a shit about 3 as the second game. Because at the end of the day, we've only seen what we kinda could expect, you know? We haven't had that trailer. The trailer that even people that couldn't give less of a shit about Splatoon say, Oh, this looks good and interesting. What the fuck? Because what we've been shown is kinda just expected. Yeah, sure, we get new mechanics like the squid roll and being able to throw eggs, which is huge. But to a casual person that just looks at Splatoon 3 as a game, they don't really know what's distinctly different from this game in the second, because it's genuinely hard to tell. Even for some Splatoon fans, it's kind of hard to see the difference between the second game and the third, because they just look so similar, and outside of the minor differences that we have seen, which to Splatoon fans are fucking huge, like throwing eggs in Salmon Run and being able to actually just do more shit is incredible. I think, at least to me, when a game of Nintendo's doesn't have a lot of information or doesn't want to share a lot of information, it's because the game is either low in content and when it releases, everyone complains. Like, think of Mario Strikers Battle League, a game that only had, like, one trailer, and the gameplay looks good, and it's actually fun to play, but when you have the game, you realize, wow, this has nothing in content, and this was a complete waste of my $60. Because at the end of the day, Mario Strikers Battle League is so low in content that it just feels like it should have been free. Which was a game that they had little trailers for because they knew that the game had little content and there was nothing more to it. Like, No More Heroes 3 was also another game that had very little trailers, and if they did have trailers, it was mainly showing the combat and not how everything else was. Because outside of the combat being fucking gorgeous, amazing, s smooth, 60 FPS, fun as hell stuff, it's just really wasn't that good. It had a world that was buggy and shitty looking. It just didn't run well, and it returned stuff from the first and second games on the Wii that not a lot of people liked. It's Nintendo games like this that show exactly what you they want you to show, but they don't show the overall content in the package that makes it a little worrisome for people and a bit concerning. Like, Bayonetta 2 had trailers that showed off everything that they could have done and even had some secrets to it and more. At least from trailers and stuff like that that I can remember, it didn't show that you had so many other characters that you could play as in this game. It bundled in a lot of content and actually hid some even though it told you exactly what it, you wanted to see. A genuine counter-argument you might be saying to specifically me is that Bayonetta 3 has only had two trailers, so why am I not concerned about that? Well, it's because I know Platinum, and I know that they make games that they just have fun with, and it's easy to see in the gameplay that they just don't give a fuck if they have limits, because they say, no, we don't want limits, and we're just not gonna take the limits. We're going to go sky high with what we want to do in this game, and it just feels incredible each and every time. 
That doesn't mean I'm devaluing this Splatoon team. No, I think they're fucking fantastic with what they do. Because they can make even something that's so limited be so good. For instance, Splatoon 2's netcode of being that it can always be at a crisp 60 FPS even if you're laggy, which just seems so wild for a system that doesn't even know what the fuck rollback netcode is. So I'm not devaluing the team, I'm just saying that there hasn't been something that hooks me, you know? And it might feel a little different because Bayonetta 3, we've been waiting for, well, since past the first game, so nine fucking years, and we've been waiting even longer because of the anticipation that, yeah, the third game does exist. But Splatoon 3 doesn't really feel like it deserves existence. Not because I don't, not because I think it's bad, but I just think it's way too soon. And I might feel this way probably because Splatoon 3 doesn't feel like it deserves to exist at least yet. I'm not saying that it's going to be bad in any way. No, I think it's going to be a fantastic game. I just think it's not needed right now. People, even to this day, are still playing 2. And hell, some crazy motherfuckers are still playing the first game on Wii U! So with so many active players on your past games, it just seems a little unnecessary to make a third game in my opinion. So yeah, that's all my thoughts on that. I know it's a worried video and it, everyone fucking hates worried videos, but if you liked it, you can like, subscribe, all that stuff down below. It's completely optional, but it helps me out a lot. And as always, later, folks.